small village in Tepa, in the Ashanti region of Ghana. We've reached our work site now, and uh, we're gonna take a look at the houses now that are being built. They're just at the foundation level, so we're hoping to complete two or three houses in the next two weeks here for this uh, for the people in this small village. So we're gonna have an initiation right now, as you can see here. And, uh, villagers here that we're uh, gonna be uh, building the houses for. These are probably houses that uh, Habitat for Humanity has already built before we arrive. And let's get these uh, to... Okay, watch. Okay, sit, start talking. <laughs> All right. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Wave. Wave. Hey, <laughs> 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 Hold on, no, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that, don't do that. I thought, 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 Yo, um, I'm in the bus, it's so friggin' hot. It's like you'd think it was Africa. So, um, yeah, I was talking to one of our uh, leaders, and I was like, you know, we're spending so much money um, on this compared to what the actual base costs of the houses are. Right around, believe it or not, $2,500. And um, he said, yeah, I know, we struggle with that. But the idea of Habitat for Humanity is not just to build houses, but it's also, there's a lot of other benefits that happen when you get a team that comes into a remote village like this. Um, a lot of other benefits that, that come besides just the fact that when we leave, they'll have two more houses to live in. Um, a lot of these villagers, um, have not even seen, say, for instance, white people before or interacted with them. So it's that's really good. They don't feel as isolated or as remote from the rest of the world. Connections start happening. Communication starts happening. It builds possibility and it builds hope um, compared to, say, if we just, you know, spent the money a little bit more, um, you know, fiduciary, fiduciarily, responsibly, and just threw a bunch of money here and sent some guys and you know blah 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 but the whole team idea I think has a lot more benefits at least that's the Habitat for Humanity theory here and um, they do seem really enthused to be working with us and working alongside of us getting to know us you know they're sharing their language with us we're sharing our language with them etc etc <laughs> sweet okay keep working all right, come on, who's, who's next? Get a brick. Let's, let's build a house. Let's build a house. All right, come on. Let's do it. Solomon, get a brick. Come on, get a brick. 
Sweet! Look at that. What did they say? My name is I shoot. How do you say it? I shoot. I shoot. I shoot. I shoot. I shoot. Wow, you're a good balancer. That's really good. All right. Okay, let's go. This is a work site so far. We've done uh, one, two, three. We've done three levels now of uh, friggin' block. Now we're gonna start break. We're hoping to finish two or three of these houses while we're here. It's not a lot, but you know, we're trying. Okay. Here we are. Are you gonna talk? Yeah. You can you can uh, narrate too. No, yeah, uh huh. Well, here's Ed. Uh, this is what they're calling chalking. Uh, we might call it mortaring or slapping mud. Uh huh. And wait, over on this side. Mr. Andrews, look at that, look at the form, look at the form. And then we have some of the people teaching us how to do this lovely stuff. Okay, Ed, how's it going? Pretty good, I think, I think that one's done. <laughs> All right, Off. some quick notes. Um, it's the end of the day. Um, I'm studying the language, language of twee. I mean, there's like 20 languages here, but I'm studying the Twee dialect of the Akan language, which is spoken in the southern portion of uh, this country. And um, getting ready to eat some dinner. So, um, yeah, wow. It's our first day at work, and I gotta tell you, um, you know, we've done some of this before. Nothing like this. You're not prepared for it. You think you're going to be prepared for it. See, I was thinking it was going to be like going to South America or Central America or some of the Caribbean islands, you know, as far as the level of primitiveness. But um, this was something. You saw the footage of us working, so you got to see what this village looked like. And this village, I mean, we're building a housing development in this village. Habitat for Humanity started it in 2004. They've only built 23 houses so far. We're building the 24th, 25th, and 26th house in this area. What we're building are houses that are, God, it can't be more than probably 300 square feet. Um, we're building them out of bricks that are made from the clay from the ground um, and mortar bricks and mortar houses um, they have a little porch they don't have any electric at all in the whole area so we're building homes you know when I was there I was so hot that I got the sort of heat prostration uh, symptoms <sighs> and I'm so out of breath like I'm just like worn out you know, like I just need to fucking sleep. Um, I felt like I was by like 12, one. I just felt like I had to die. Um, and we kept working until four in the afternoon. The heat from the sun is so much stronger than you think. It's not any sunnier than America, but it's just hotter. It's not like it's, oh, so bright or anything. No, it's just you feel hot. And your face and your body feels like it's burning. Uh, but we're like right on the equator. If you look at where we're at, we're like at longitude of four and latitude of five. Opposite of that. But I mean, it's like, you know, we're like right there. Um, 
So, yeah, when I was sitting there taking a break, I was thinking, man, I'd love to fucking go in one of these houses and cool down. And then I realized they don't even have air conditioning because they don't have electricity. And as I thought about it more, you know, and these are the homes we're leaving. I mean, we're, we, we're building them and then we leave, and these are their homes. But, you know, I mean, they're used to it. And a lot of them are used to not having homes at all. So we're building them something that they've never even had before. So it's really special. And the people that are helping us um, are like the people that whose home it's going to be. You know, like the mom, the grandma, the dad, the kids. You know, it's really weird. Working alongside of them, they're carrying the bricks on their heads, and, you know, to give to us to put, you know, and uh, so no electricity. They cook their food in open fires, you know, out on uh, outside. They go to the bathroom outside or inside. There's like a little room that just has a hole in the ground, and they just go to the bathroom in there. And uh, that means no refrigerator. Where are you going to put your Sprite? That's what you know came to me. And how do you charge your iPod with no electric? It's weird, but I guess they make do. But uh, anyway, first day of work, good stuff. But uh, as you can probably tell, it's really. Freaking tired. It's the end of the day. We've eaten dinner. One of the most um, moving experiences of these trips is we get these care packages sent over to us from all of our uh, friends back home in New York um, from church. So you can see uh, you can see this is all the stuff that um, Chris Andrews got. There's the candy man right there. Big stack of letters and um, just tons of letters from all of our friends and just a big bag of stuff, hand sanitizer and gum and cards and all sorts of things. And we just get these big stacks of uh, letters from everybody just expressing their uh, care for us and their love for us and wishing us well. And it's a really nice uh, ex you know, part of the experience that makes it very moving and helps kind of temper the amount of hard labor um, that we go through during the day. It's cool.